Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Giovanni Reads, The House of the Scorpion, Chapter 24. Not housekeeping this video, it was mostly on the last video. So, right into Chapter 24, a final goodbye. Daft Donald held Matt firmly, and Tamlin wrapped him in duct tape. The bodyguards slung him over a horse as he exchanged greetings with the other members of El Patron's pri private army lounging by the stables. Where are you taking it? A man called. I thought I'd dump it next to the Egypt pens, Tamlin replied. The man's laughter was lost in the drum of the horse's hooves, hooves striking the earth. This animal was different from the safe horses. It was faster and less predictable. It even smelled different. Matt, with his nose pressed into its hide, was in a good position to know. Safe horses had a faint chemical odor, but this one reeked of sun and sweat. Suddenly, Matt realized what Tamlin meant by dumping him next to the Egypt pens. He was going to be thrown into yellow ooze at the bottom of the pit. The horror of it, un the horror of it, the unfairness and treachery of almost everyone he'd known made Matt's blood pound in his ears. But this time, instead of fear, he felt a surge of pure animal rage. He deserved to live. He was owed this life that had so casually been given to him, and he would die. And if he would die, he would struggle until the very last minute. Matt tested. The, the tape holding his arms and legs. It wouldn't move an inch. Well then, Matt, the, I'll have to wiggle and squirm my way out of that sludge pit. He saw the earth fly under the horse's hooves. His stomach bounced painfully against his body. This creature didn't run as smoothly as a safe horse. Finally, it slowed and Tamlin lifted Matt down. The boy managed to jackknife his body and drive his head into the man's stomach. Ah, you pea ninny, swore Tamlin. Look about you before you do a stupid trick like that. Matt rolled onto his back, his feet up to deliver a kick, but he saw a blue sky and a shoulder of rock. He smelled not slime and corruption, but good, clean air scented by creosote. They weren't by the Egypt pens. They were on the path to the Ehold Mountain. Mountains. There, I hope to have a lavish apology, grunted Tamlin, peeling the tape none too gently off Matt's skin. Are you going to drown me in the oasis in instead? Matt snarled. Get a grip on yourself, lad. All right, I can see you've got grounds for suspicion, but credit me with a little decency. How can I trust someone who killed twenty children? Matt said. So they told you that. Tamlin looked so sad. Melt felt slightly, but only slightly, sorry for him. Is it true? He demanded. Oh, aye, it's true. Tamlin wadded the tape into a ball and stuffed it into one of the horse's saddlebags. He took out a backpack and heaved it over his shoulder. Come on, I don't have much time. He started up the trail, not looking back. Matt paused. He could steal the horse and ride north. The farm patrol might not know yet that he was marked for disposal. Disposal, Matt thought with a glow of anger. But the animal didn't look so easy to ride. Unlike a safe horse, that would be tied to a tree. It rolled its eyes and flared its nostrils when Matt tried to get near it. On the other hand, he could follow, into the Tamlin's, uh, follow Tamlin into the mountains and hope the man's friendship held. Tamlin had disappeared among the rocks, wasn't even bothering to see whether Matt had followed. I'm probably the world's biggest idiot, thought Matt as he trudged along the trail. The oasis was brimming. Fall rains had brought life to the Pella Verde trees, making them bright with delicate yellow and orange flowers. The grape arbor was le leafier than Matt had ever remembered, and a small duck paddled its way across the water as he approached. Tamlin was perched on a rock. That's a cinnamon teal, he said. They migrate from the United States to Aztlan this time of year. You wonder where they find a speck of water like this in a dry desert. Matt settled on another rock not too near. The sun was sliding behind the hills and shadows crept into the little valley. If I hadn't been for this place, I'd have run barking mad years ago, the bodyguard said. Matt watched the little duck work its way along the far shore. I was half mad when I went to work for El Patron. It's a place to hide, I thought then. I'll leave when the police get tired of hunting for me. But of course things didn't work out that way. When something belongs to El Patron, it's his forever. So you did kill the, ch kill the children? I could say it was an accident, and it was, but that doesn't take away from the horror. I was intending to blow up the Prime Minister, a fat toad who deserved it. I simply never considered the other people who might get in the way. Frankly, I was such a self-important ass I didn't care. I got most of these scars from that explosion, and Duff Donald had his throat cut. That's why he can't talk. In all these years, Matt hadn't thought why Daft Donald never spoke. He'd assumed the large, silent man was antisocial. 
El Patron had an instinct for people he could enslave, said Tamlin. He was such a powerful presence. Power's a strange thing, lad. It's a drug, and people like me crave it. It wasn't till I met Celia that I saw what a monster I'd become. I was too happy swaggering about in El Patron's shadow. But you let the doctors turn Celia into an idiot, said Matt. I did not. I marked her forehead so it appeared like she was operated on. I put her in the stables with Rosa. Matt looked at Tamlin directly for the first time since they arrived at the Oasis. A great weight lift shifted off of his chest. She'd be safe as long as she remembers to act like a zombie. So now I think I've earned that lavish apology, the bodyguard said. And Matt gave it a great length and wholeheartedly. I would have brought her here, but Celia isn't much for climbing rocks. Tamlin sighed. They looked over the pool with the afternoon sky so, uh, silvering on its surface. The cinnamon teal waddled onto the bank and pre preened its feathers. A swallow scooped up a dragonfly hovering over the water. Am I supposed to live here? Matt said. Tamlin stuttered. Ah, my mind was wandering. I love the way the swallows turn about just before they crash into ground. No, lad, you won't be able to survive. It's better to go to Aztlan. Aztlan? Matt's heart gave a bound. Are you coming with me? I can't. Tamlin's voice was sad. You see, I've done terrible things in my life, and I can't escape the consequences. That's not true, Matt said. The police probably stopped looking for you long ago. You could give people... Uh, you give people a false name and grow a beard and shave your head. Of course I could. And I may, s and I, may I say, you have shown quite a lawless streak. Gotta chip off the old block you are. No, I'm not talking about moral consequences. I've spent years ben benefiting from the horrors of opium. Now I have a chance to put things right. I mustn't pass it up. Celia has made me see what... Mm, see that. She's a very strict woman, you know. Won't put up with evil. I know, Matt said, said Matt, thank you for how Celia had stood up to El Patron. I've already packed your bag, Tamlin said, unslinging the backpack. There's maps in the chest. Take as many water bottles as you can manage, and when you reach the Aztlan border, say you're a refugee. Your parents are taken by the farm patrol. Act stupid. That shouldn't be a problem. Don't tell anyone, and don't tell anyone you're a clone. Won't they be able to tell? Matt imagined the Aztlanists rage when they realized he, they'd been duped. Here's the dirty little secret, said Tamlin, belt, belt down and whispered, as though he had hid from the information, as though he had hide the information from the swallows, the duck, and the dragonflies. No one can tell the difference between a clone and a human. That's because there isn't any different. The idea of clones being inferior is a filthy lie. Tamlin strode off to the metal chest, leaving Matt open-mouthed. He watched the man remove water bottles and maps. <laughs> How could a clone be the same as a human? Everything in Matt's experience argued against it. Tamlin unzipped a pocket in the backpack and took out a lump clump of paper. This is money, see? I should have taught you about it before. Here's a hundred peso note and here's a fifty. Always ask the price of something first and offer half. Oh crikey, you're not going to learn it now. Just remember to take out, a, take out one piece of paper at a time and don't let me see how many pieces of paper you have. The sun had set and the dusk was falling rapidly. Tamlin built a fire and stacked dry wood nearby. You should go first thing in the morning. That gives you 12 hours to reach the border. It's the ideal time because the farm patrol is at the house for the week. Another thing, El Patron kept opium frozen at time, frozen 100 years in the past. I don't understand, said Matt. Opium, as much as possible, is the way things were in El Patron's youth. Celia cooks on the wood fire and the rooms aren't air conditioned. The fields are harvested by people, not machines. Even the rockets aren't allowed to fly over. The only place where the rules are relaxed are at the hospital and the security system. It was El Patron's way of outwitting death, one of his ways. But everything's the same on TV, Matt protested. Tamlin laughed. El Patron con controlled that too. El Tigro Negro snapped his last whip a century ago. Talk about reruns. In many ways, you'll find Aztlan confusing. But they've had a movement back to simpler times recently. They're trying to turn away from a machine-based economy to the old Mexican culture. You'll find some things familiar. Wait, Matt cries. Matt cried as the bodyguard made ready to leave. Can't you stay? The thought of losing his friend and perhaps never seeing him again is devastating. I've got to attend the week, said Tamlin. Then bring Celia here. I could help her climb the rocks. Wait till you see the rocks. 
No, lad. Celia's too old to make the trip. I'll keep her as safe as I can. You have my word on it. What should I do in Estuan? Where can I stay? Where's my head? said Timlin, stopping at the edge of the firelight. I left the most important thing out. The first thing you do in Estuan is catch a hovercraft to San Luis and ask directions to the convent of Santa Clara. Unless I'm very much mistaken, Maria will dance rings around you when she sees you walk in the front door. There is no stopping him in that, this time. Tam limbed short ahead, with Matt trotting behind. When they reached the hole in the rock, the bodyguard turned and put his hand on Matt's shoulders. I don't believe in long goodbyes, he said. Will I ever see you again? Tamlin waited a moment before saying Tamlin waited a moment before saying no. Matt drew his breath sharply. I've never lied to you and I don't intend to start now. The important thing is you've escaped. You're the one possession El Patron let slip through his fingers. What's going to happen to me? You're going to find Maria, and if things work out, her mother. You know Esperanza? Oh I. She used to come to the house. Did you ever see that movie about the dinosaurs? The one with the Velociraptor? Matt remembered a particular nasty dinosaur with long claws and teeth and a willingness to burrow through rock to get at its prey. Well, that's Esperanza when she's got to cause. She's a good person to have on your side. Tamlin climbed through the rock and went off into gathering dark. He didn't look back. Matt kept himself from shining the flashlight on him. End of chapter 24. Aren't I just cuckening? Anyway, shit is getting intense, and I will see you all for chapter 25.